Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We've said that the majority of the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah are Ash'ari and Maturidi in their Aqidah. The same way we have the madhabs of fiqh, the four madhabs, the Hanafis, Shafi'is, Malikis, and Hanbalis, we also have two madhabs in Aqidah, which are the Ash'ari and the Maturidi madhabs. Now, we've said that the majority of the scholars are Ash'ari and Maturidi in their Aqidah. This is what the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah has been. And they've come to us and said, well, where is this majority? You know, what majority are you talking about? Because the majority is not Ash'ari and Maturidi. The majority of the scholars aren't. And so they make this claim that, that uh, you know, we're, we're kind of just making this up. And this is something that all the Ash'aris, they just say this to try and give credibility to their thing. So what I'm going to do in this video is demonstrate how Allah preserved this deen through Ash'aris and Maturidis. But before I do that, I want to make something clear, which is that when we're taking knowledge of a certain field, we take it from those who are specialized in that field. Just like you take biology from someone who is a biologist, and you take mathematics from someone who's a mathematician, you also take certain fields within Islam from those who are specialized in that field. So when it comes to the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, the scholars who were specialized in that field were the fuqaha, they were the jurists. They weren't the muhaddithin who specialized in the, the science of hadith. They weren't the mufassirin who specialized in the science of you know giving commentary of the Quran. They were the fuqaha who, who used from the Quran and the sunnah and you know brought out rulings from them in a way that was free from any types of contradictions and closest to what the Prophet ﷺ uh, intended to teach us and what is correct. So this is the job of the faqih. Their job was to look at the Quran and understand it based off of a set of principles. Now, when we say that the majority of the scholars of the past were Ash'ari and Maturidi, and even of today are Ash'ari and Maturidi, we're not talking about scholars who weren't specialized in that field. Because this is like saying, you have a doctor give you his opinion on you know whatever is wrong with you and your body, and then somebody else, like a mathematician, comes and gives you his opinion on what's wrong with your body. The mathematician doesn't know the detailed secrets that are within the field of science, even though he may have a general broad understanding. And this is the same thing when it comes to the other scholars, how they had you know, a broad understanding, a general understanding of aqidah, of fiqh, but they weren't specialized in that field. So their opinions and their understanding when it comes to detailed matters within aqidah, within fiqh, their opinions are not taken over the opinions of those who are specialized in that field. Okay, as long as that makes sense, we can go ahead and get into this video. I said that I wanted to show how Allah has preserved this deen through the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. And for this, I'm going to look at the different madhabs of fiqh, the scholars of jurisprudence, as I said. And we're going to look at some of the most relied upon works that are taught, that are studied, that are referenced uh, within these different madhahib. And we're going to look at them and their authors and see what madhab in aqidah their authors followed. Because if we can show that the entire madhab is preserved by Ash'aris and Maturidis, and these are the people with the aqidah that Allah chose to preserve the rulings to do with our, uh, our affairs in this world. All the rulings to do with you know, how to perform hajj, how do we pray, how do we do these things which come after our aqidah, after our belief. Allah chose to explain and to preserve all those correct understandings by these people which only shows that they did not have a deviant belief if they're all agreeing upon this one thing. So let's start off with the Hanafi madhab. In the Hanafi madhab, the you know very basic text, beginner text that's taught to you know the beginner students of knowledge who just started in their path of seeking knowledge and they want to study some fiqh, we have Nur al-Idah by Imam al-Shurumbulali and we also have his commentary Maraq al-Falah. These are two you know relied upon works uh, within the Hanafi madhab for beginners. Imam al-Shurumbulali was a Maturidi. You have Al-Lubab fi Sharh al-Kitab by Abdul Ghani al-Maydani. Abdul Ghani al-Maydani was a Maturidi. You have Mukhtasar al-Quduri by Imam al-Quduri and he was a Maturidi. You have Al-Ikhtiyar and these are all these are all works that are studied. I studied Quduri, I studied Nur al-Idah, I studied Maraq al-Falah. We, we read from Al-Lubab when we were reading uh, Quduri. Right now we're going through Al-Ikhtiyar as well. These are all works that you actually study to achieve mastery in uh, a specific school of thought. Anyhow, so Al-Ikhtiyar was written by Imam al-Mawsili, Maturidi. You have Ad-Dur al-Muntaqa by Imam al-Haskafi. He was Maturidi. We have Al-Hidayah by Imam Al-Marghinani. Al-Hidayah is a book that is at the top level of the Hanafi Madhab. It's one of the, one of the highest level Hanafi fiqh books. Imam Al-Marghinani was a Maturidi. You have Hashiyat ibn Abidin, which is the reference and the go-to for giving fatwas in the Hanafi Madhab. 
everyone refers to the Hashia of Ibn Abidin. Ibn Abidin was a Maturidi. These are the relied upon works within the Hanafi Madhab. We'll do the same thing with the Maliki Madhab. We can start off with uh, Aqrabul Masalik by Imam Ahmad al Dardir. Imam Ahmad al Dardir was an Ash'ari. You have Ilah al Masalik by Imam al Wansharisi, Ash'ari. Sharh al Sagir by Imam al Sawi, he was Ash'ari. You have Tabiyin al Masalik by Imam al Shinqiti, he was Ash'ari. You have Muhtasar Khalil by Imam Khalil ibn Ishaq al-Jundi. He was Ash'ari. You have Sharh al-Kabir by Imam Ahmad al-Dardir. I've already mentioned that he was Ash'ari, but it just shows that even more of his works are relied upon within the madhab of the Maliki fiqh. You have At-Tawdih fi Sharhi Muhtasar ibn al-Hajib by, again, the same scholar, uh, Imam Khalil ibn Ishaq. And I've mentioned that he was Ash'ari. And this book is one of the higher level books in the Maliki fiqh as well. We can do the same thing with the Shafi'i Madhab. Some of the relied upon works in the Shafi'i Madhab, the go-to works for giving fatwas, for actually issuing rulings. You have Tuhfatul Muhtaj by Imam Ibn Hajar al-Haytami. Ibn Hajar al-Haytami was an Ash'ari. You have Nihayatul Muhtaj by Imam al-Ramli. He was Ash'ari. You have Mughni al-Muhtaj and al-Iqna' by Imam al-Sharbini. He was Ash'ari. You have the Majmu' of Imam al-Nawawi. Imam al-Nawawi was Ash'ari. You have Fath al-Wahhab by Shaykh al-Islam Zakariya al-Ansari and he was Ash'ari. These are the leading works in the Shafi'i Madhab that are you know, read, studied, taught, referenced. Same thing with the Maliki Madhab, same thing with the Hanafi Madhab. It would be of extreme arrogance for a person to come afterwards and say, all of these great scholars whom Allah accepted their work and who became a reference for all of us today living 1,400 years after the Prophet ﷺ, they all could not understand the Qur'an and Sunnah when it talked about Aqidah. They couldn't get it. Their Aqidah was just wrong. They just couldn't do it. Ash'ari maturidi mubtadi'in. They just couldn't do it. But somehow, somehow, they couldn't get the correct understanding when it came to who Allah was, but they could get the correct understanding when it comes to what Allah wants from us. And to be a little bit more bold, you know, when we study in fiqh, we study the rulings of how to clean yourself after the bathroom. This is like saying that all of these imams who were specialized in the Quran and Sunnah, they couldn't get right who Allah was, but they could get right how to clean yourself after the toilet. Do you see the kind of arrogance that has to come from a person to say that they're all wrong and they're all mubtadi'een and they're all misguided they're all wrong, but you know we're going to rely upon them for uh, for our fiqh, and you know more than the entire ummah. You know they 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 say things like, uh, you know you shouldn't study with ash'aris or take from the ash'aris and maturidis. Jamiatul Azhar, the Azhar University in Egypt, well, it was one of the biggest universities for Islamic sciences, and they're all ash'ari. The school of of Dioband in Pakistan, right where they teach where they teach uh, you know the Hanafi fiqh, huge school. Graduates, graduate so many scholars every single year. They're all Maturidi. So you want to go to the big institutions, they're all Ash'ari and Maturidi. You want to look at the scholars of the past, the Hanafis, the Malikis, the Shafi'is, you look at you know, the works that are relied upon in these schools of thought, they're all Ash'ari and Maturidi. So it is of extreme arrogance to say that they couldn't get it, but I get it. And I understand what Imam Malik meant. So you'll see them quoting Imam Malik's statement and then they'll say something as absurd as, why don't the Malikis follow Imam Malik in his Aqidah? The incident of Imam Malik when he says, Al-Istiwa Ma'loom wal kayfu minhu ghair ma'qool. When he says that this incident, and I'll, I'll make a video detail, detailing the explanation of this inshallah in the future, but this incident is recorded and written and talked about and explained and understood in the Ash'aris and Maturidi's works. Nobody denies this, and nobody denies what Imam Malik said. We just follow what Imam Malik said based off of the understanding that Imam Malik meant. And we demonstrate that in our books as well. So it's not, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very strange to hear people say things like, oh, uh, why don't the, the followers of the Malikis, why don't they follow Imam Malik in his aqidah? Look, Imam Malik said, Al-Istiwa ma'loom, wal kayfu minhu ghair ma'qul. Imam Malik said this. Okay, did you think that the Malikis didn't know that? And the Ash'aris didn't know that. And the Maturidis, didn't, they, they didn't know that. And when they knew it, they just rejected it. 
and they didn't understand it in a certain way, and that you have the correct and enlightened understanding, so now you decide that all of the followers of Imam Malik that have the relied upon works of the Madhab, and Abu Hanifa, and Imam al-Shafi'i, you know, they all, all of them, they just couldn't get it, but you got it. This is the type of arrogance that we try to stay away from. We stick with what the majority of these scholars have agreed upon when it is taken from people who are specialized in that field. So I hope this video clarifies how Allah continues to preserve uh, you know, the, the ahkam of this dunya, how to pray, how to fast, how to deal with people, how to use the bathroom, how to do all of this, the ahkam of this deen, this religion, has been preserved by the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. And those who say, that the Ash'aris are Jahmis, or the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, they're not from Ahl Sunnah. These are people who want to destroy the deen. They want to destroy the religion because what that does is states that the Hanafis, the Shafi'is, and the Malikis, and the relied upon works and the authors whom Allah accepted you know, their efforts from, who we all study today, they're all deviants. So anyone who studies from the Shafi'i, Maliki, and Hanafi fiqh, they are studying from deviant scholars who understood how to use the toilet according to the Qur'an, but they couldn't understand who Allah was from the Qur'an. So we ask Allah to save us from such arrogance, and save us from such blindness, and to guide us to the correct path, and to allow us and enable us to do what the very word Islam means, which means to submit. Even if we don't understand it, even if we think with our intellects that we're smarter than all of these scholars of the past, who, who had the specialization in the Qur'an and Sunnah, and we think that we know more than them, we ask Allah to save us from this, and to keep us firm on the path of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, sticking firm to the Qur'an and the Sunnah as the Salaf al-Salih have understood, and as the Fuqaha have understood the statements of the Salaf al-Salih. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in.